nipping for morning. Bill and Darlene have definitely become Floridians because this morning Bill said, uh, when we woke up this morning, we said, okay, I think we're leaving to Florida tomorrow. <laughs> but we're hoping that they don't. <laughs> we love having them here. So we do have several announcements this morning. Um, first of all, our calendar raffle drawing continues. Um, and today's winner is Pat Stroke. She's not here yet, but, um, and oddly enough, the gift that she won was the gift she donated. <laughs> <laughs> and that has happened a couple of times. So, uh, so anyway, uh, and if you follow up the Facebook page, the announcements are, are put out every day. Um, and thank you all once again for supporting them. We are collecting for our neighbors in need uh, for this whole month. Uh, the envelopes were in your bulletins last week, and I believe they're in again this week. Um, but if you are not prepared but would like to make a donation for that, you can bring it any time this month. I wanted to say, uh, Bible study continues on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And uh, I know that it's going awesome. Um, it's a beautiful gift that Bill gives to our members and friends. And everyone who goes just feels so uplifted and it's inspirational and informational. Um, so, thank you, Bill, once again. I said you're welcome. And uh, also, uh, if you notice that our, our flowers on the altar change in there, um, and our bulletin board has been done, and I just wanted to thank, uh, do a shout out to a couple of people, because Sarah donated all of the silk flowers, so I want to say thank you, Sarah. Uh, my partner, Glenn, did this arrangement and this arrangement, and Hannah Gervais and I did the bulletin board. Um, so I just want to say thank you, Hannah, thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Glenn. Um, we look through it. Our October mission is hygiene and period facts for the homeless in the park. If anybody would like to uh, participate with that mission project, you could just bring it with you um, and put it in the basket up front here. And um, they will be giving those out, I believe, right at, after the end of the month. We are doing a uh, blessing of pets on November 4th. So if you have a pet that you would like to have blessed, it will be outside. And it will be rain or shine unless it's pouring rain. If it's just a little bit of rain, we'll do it up on the portico. So it's sort of a rain or shine event. Uh, if you have a pet or you know someone that has a pet, and it doesn't matter what the pet is, it can be a little pet, it can be a big pet. Um, we'll even, if you consider a stuffed animal your pet, we'll bless that as well. And then on November 5th, uh, we're going to be doing a music and praise night at 6 p.m. It's a Sunday night. Of course, it will feature our choir and Jane. Uh, we, you know, we used to do that the last Sunday night of every month. Uh, but then when COVID hit, we stopped, and we've done it just a few times since. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, please make sure you come to that. And if you can uh, bring some goodies, if you're coming, that would be as great as well, because we always have a reception afterwards downstairs. Christmas on the Hill and Bender Fair is November 11th, um, and that is falling into place very nicely. If anybody would like to help with that or do baked goods, uh, we could use help uh, for people just to be around. We're also looking for a volunteer to help out in the fruit shop that day because we're going to have Mimi's Attic. It's going to be a Christmas area in the annex. Um, so we need someone to run that because Ginny, who has been working in the thrift shop, is going to be out on the main floor, uh, ruminating her roof, as well as uh, being an advisor for anything, any uh, questions that people have out on the floor. Uh, so if anybody has any time that day, you can speak with either Ginny or Sarah, um, and we'll make sure that we have plenty of people to do everything that we need help. All right, so Pat, I did notice that you came in, and you actually are the winner of the raffle today, and it's for kidneys. <laughs> I think that we, we were told that you gave that gift, so you want it back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, also, sign-up sheets are available for helping with the oh, baking fudge table for the uh, the bed affair as well, uh, and. Just a reminder about handicap parking. I know we only have one handicap designated space out front, but we have several old people or handicapped people 
So we can leave those spots just right out in front of the church, available for the people who need to be closer to the church. We have been given permission to use the parking lot at the lawyer's office at the corner, and of course there's parking around the back if you are physically able. So um, just please be mindful of that so that it's easier for the people that need to be close to get access to the church. And finally, um, I just, we received a gift from our uh, brother and sisters at Chapel Street Congregation uh, Church. Uh, you know, they had been worshiping with us during the summer, and when we had the flood issues, and I announced that we needed help with that, um, they said that they wanted to see if they could help me with it, and we received a check from them this week for $1,160. So I just wanted to do a shout out and thank you to our brothers and sisters. Um, and, um, and I don't know if we were all here last week, but we had also received an anonymous gift from a family in Knoxville, Tennessee of $1,200, who um, sent this beautiful card and I'm not, I think I know what the connection is, but um, the, the note just said that the Lord had spoke to them and was asking them to gift Park Place Congregational Church with a check for $1,200. So, you know, God is just watching over us, and I just wanted to do a shout out and to thank God and to all the people and all of you who are always here so generously and lovingly supporting the ministries of this church. We can't do it without all of us. So thank you very much. And there's also more information in the bulletin, so please take your bulletins home with you and mark up the calendar with all the exciting things that are happening. And we have two birthdays this week. Uh, we have Taylor Poland and we have Mike Newman. Now Mike is going to be in our prayers because he was actually in a, a car accident yesterday and broke his kneecap. Um, so they're not able to be here today, but his birthday is coming up this week, and Taylor Coleman. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Taylor and Mike.
Good morning once again. So this morning I'm, uh, this reading inspired my, my moment for this morning um, because I know a lot of people in my life um, that suffer from depression and anxiety. And that is a problem that is so prevalent in our society. And I'm sure that every one of us here, if we have not had to deal with it ourselves, we have people in our lives or in our families that struggle. So I chose this morning to talk a little bit about that. I am lucky that 
I have never had to deal with in my own being severe depression or severe anxiety. There have been moments in my life where I feel touches of that. But because of my strong faith, I think that God helps to see me through all of these difficult and challenging times. But I also understand that some of the severe depression and anxiety is much more than we can do on our own. So we have doctors and we have psychiatrists and we have counselors that work with us to help see us through our struggles. And it's really important for us to be aware that these conditions exist and that we have compassion for people that struggle with depression and anxiety. Because if we don't struggle with it, it's easy for us to just shun it off and act like we don't really care because we don't understand. But we need to be God's people with all people. But today, especially with people that are suffering from anxiety and depression. Take time to be patient with one another. Take time to be supportive of one another. Love one another, care for one another, and maybe just get together with a friend who's suffering and enter into some time of prayer. I'm gonna go back to the reading that Christine just shared because there's a portion in that that I wanna reiterate. It says, rejoice, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication give thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If we can truly work to make our lives be in such a way that we keep the mind of Jesus in our hearts and in our spirits, I guarantee you that our lives are going to be made richer and more bountiful and we will be able to help others who struggle with some of these issues. You know, we can get anxious just driving down the street. We can get anxious going into a grocery store. We can get into a disagreement with someone that can cause severe anxiety. We worry. We get anxiety because we anticipate things. We get anxiety because we don't have within ourselves a sense of peace. Let us be in the moment of prayer. O oh, holy God, give us the strength and the wisdom and the compassion to be your people, to be your caring love here on earth with those who need it so desperately. May we be kind, may we be patient, May we be loving toward each other. For you taught us that love and loving one another and loving you are the greatest of all the commandments. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning is from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Dear God, we pray that the words of my mouth and that the meditations of all of our hearts are acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Everyone's invited. Now, isn't that a great thought? How many of you have ever been to a gap function? A beautiful, extravagant affair, a black tie event, the opening of a prestigious club, the installation of a dignitary, a queen, a king, a president, a royal event. Now, one of the first things we might feel if we were invited is that we would feel honored. We would feel like we were special to be chosen from the multitudes to be a guest. Then, once the reality began to set in, we might think, oh my, what will I wear? I'd have to pull out my best, or maybe go and buy something to wear. Bring out the finest jewelry, maybe get your hair done, a manicure, a pedicure, Picture Cinderella. We all know the story about Cinderella. When the king decides to pull the ball to find a proper mate for his son, the prince. We've all seen the movie or read the book. Everyone in the whole village gets so excited to be able to be a part of it. And of course, we must remember that there's a Cinderella. All the people in the, in the neighboring villages can't wait to go. And all the parents hope that one of their daughters is the chosen one that will become the prince's bride. And then there's still Cinderella, whose lovely stepmother puts her away so that she cannot come to the ball. And there's Cinderella dreaming of the ability to go and living in her own fantasy world. And then what happens? The fairy godmother comes and says, Cinderella, we have to get ready for a ball. And then we picture it, and there's the mice, and then there's the, the dogs that become horses, and the, you know, the pumpkin that becomes the chariot, you know, all this beautiful, beautiful stuff. And for a moment, we all wish we could be Cinderella at that moment, don't we? 
where someone comes and just transforms us. Well, we don't have a fairy godmother, do we? But we do have people that will care about us and will usually do what they can to help us get ready for whatever it is that we need to get ready for. Now, in our gospel lesson, we are reminded of the wedding banquet. We've all been to a wedding before. And if by chance you were the parents of the bride, tradition, I know it's changing, or it's changed a lot, but there was always, a, if it, the bride's parents were going to take care of the wedding, and the groom's parents would do like the, what is it, the wedding rehearsal, and the wedding rehearsal dinner, maybe if the groom's parents were wealthier than the bride's parents, they might chip in for the wedding, and of course sometimes the bride and groom have to work towards saving up as well. And sometimes weddings nowadays have become very informal. But years ago, weddings were one of those things everybody dressed up to. It was like church. I remember when I came to church and all the ladies had hats and gloves on. And all the men that came wore suits. It was kind of nice. It was kind of nice because it was like this respect thing. We're entering into the house of God. We need to be wearing our best. But society has changed a lot. And God's okay with that, because God's just happy that we're here. But then we get back to the wedding, and then we start thinking, if you're planning the wedding, what's the bride going to wear? What kind of dress? We've all seen Bridezilla uh, television, right? <laughs> Where there's bride gown wedding boards. Now, I won't get that. Well, then the bride loves it and thinks she's just perfect in that dress. And then she comes out and the sister and the mother are all kind of, mm, not that one. <laughs> and sometimes they get it in, because after all, it really is all about the bride. And then you have to decide who's going to be sitting at which tables. So that people don't get their feelings hurt. And then you've got families that don't get around along with other family members, and you have to have separate tables for certain family members so that you know, oh, they get along with so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so, and they get along with so-and-so, so we can separate it so that there's peace at the party. Then it's budget. How much can we afford to spend? And many times, people spend way more than they should on a wedding because they want it to be the most, 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 most beautiful. But is it weddings about the love that the couple have for each other? And everybody that comes are coming because they want to share in that love, especially when it's at a church or a pastor or a priest or a rabbi who's officiating the ceremony, inviting God into the mix. That, to me, is the most special weddings. And then you get the people that won't come to the ceremony. Oh, I can't make the ceremony, but I'll see you at the party. Right? Like, rather come to the wedding, and then if you can't make the whole day, don't go to the party. Right? To me, that's the most important part. Well, the banquet in our gospel lesson was an event that anyone would have been honored to be invited to, and would have prepared by wearing the right attire. Bringing the appropriate gift. But at this particular wedding banquet, many chose not to come. Now, we don't know, maybe the king wasn't a nice king. Maybe he treated the people with disrespect. Or maybe the king's son treated the people with disrespect. And then the king gets all and how dare you not come to my invitation? And then those that did come, didn't come properly dressed. So he gets mad and sends his soldiers out and says, wipe them out, get rid of them. Fortunately, that doesn't happen at weddings that we go to nowadays. Then he invites everybody else. Just get anybody. This banquet hall has to be filled. 
This is an exceptional day, and the banquet needs to be filled to honor my son. One person comes without the proper attire, gets removed. Now we're supposed to relate this to our faith and to God. Because God invites us all to the banquet. God doesn't care really what we wear on the outside, but God cares what we wear on the inside. God doesn't care about the clothes, but God cares about who we are as his people, invited to the wedding banquet. When we gather at the table on Communion Sunday, we are all invited because Jesus invites all to the table. But are we all ready to partake of that meal? When the reign of God's kingdom is before us and we are all invited, we need to think what will we have done to be prepared for that day? What will we have done in our lives to be ready for that day? When we live by letting the mind of Jesus be within us, we are walking the walk and doing what we can to walk by faith, living out God's call to each of us. Now, I read a few commentaries on of this reading, and one of them, there was a portion of it at the end that really touched me, and I'd like to share this with you. And the only thing that it said, referring who wrote it, was Pastor Jennifer, a California Lutheran pastor. And at the end of her commentary, she said, in short, the appropriate response to being invited to God's banquet is not about what we wear, but about the fruit we produce, our actions, our attitudes, our behaviors. We are invited to the great high feast, to creation's biggest party, invited freely and eagerly and urgently because God needs to fill the divine banquet hall with guests. And as we go through the big yellow doors to that banquet hall, we have to be willing to be changed by the God who invited us into the kind of guests that we ought to be. And my prayer for all of us is that we may be recognized by God as the kind of guest God has helped us to be. May we be ready to be welcomed to God's extravagant banquet. Amen. Let's join in singing hymn number 514, God Who Touches Earth with Beauty, and we will sing verses 1 and 2.
this time we share our joys and our concerns. We're members of our family, with the friends, with the concerns around the world. We ask you to open your ears and to shape our words and our hearts so that you hear us. Grant us your love and your care for all the concerns that we are about to bring forth to you. This morning we pray for Dorothy, Martha and Sherry, our sister who has been joining us with her husband. She fell and hurt her knee, so she is out of commission for a little bit. For my dear friend, Debbie Pascalucci, who is in the hospital with some, some severe health issues. suffering with severe health issues. For all the people in Israel and the Middle East, all of the innocent people, but as well as the guilty, that they hear your word to live more in the fashion that Jesus' mind would be in them that we could all learn to live in love and mutual respect of each other. For our brother Michael Dula, for his broken kneecap, that he has a speedy recovery. For the two teens that were killed in Boroughville in a tragic car accident, for their family and their friends. earthquake in Afghanistan. For Dave, whose family and friends are in the midst of the conflict and several people in his life have already lost their lives due to the conflict. <coughs> For Linda, a church administrator, as she continues to deal with her parents' health issues,
that's why we turn to you. May we be patient with answers to our prayers, knowing that all is possible in your time, and that your love will always be with all who turn to you, seeking your love and your compassion. God, we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who gave everything for us and who taught his disciples and us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God.